Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a video about the N1 dental implant and why you should use an X guide for navigation. One of the points I like to, to make sure you're aware is that fully guided templates are not offered as an option for the N1 system. The options for the N1 implant placement are number one, a freehand non-guided option, which you just take the director drill and go in and follow it with the osseo shaper. Number two, to use a two millimeter guided pilot template. And this would be then followed up by the osseo director and then followed with the osseo shaper. And then number three, to use the X guide and to do everything from the protocol that is put forward, which is the osseo director and then the osseo shaper. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the X guide, it's a dynamic navigational tool that will sit in your operatory and allow you to place the implant and watch it go in on a screen. So it's an interactive turn-by-turn -turn guidance system and it's very cool, I, I really enjoy using it. Now what you'll do is take a CBCT x-ray, a DICOM file, and you can take an iOS as well. And you'll take these two, you'll do the scans, you'll plan the implant so you know exactly where it's gonna be on a 3D nature then you use this to navigate the implant into position of where you really want this to be for long-term success. It's not mandatory to have an intraoral scan for X-Guide implant planning. However, I'd like to plan the zenith using uh, these scans. We can use small tips to get in and get the real areas of interest. And so then we're able to then bring that back into the software so we can put the softwares together, the intro scan and the CBCT. The X-Guide has an arm that will be positioned over the patient that has two cameras. If you look at these cameras a little closer, these cameras will point down at the patient and the patient's going to have trackers positioned on their arch that you're working on. And these trackers will allow you to go in sync with the actual handpiece that also has a handpiece tracker. Once you have this, you'll be able to see a target and the target's going to be showing up on the screen and you're actually watching this to show where the position of the implant's going to be, also how deep the implant's going to be, and number three, the angle of the implant. So these are key positioned items that will allow you to put the implant into the exact depth, angulation, and position. So just watch this on the practice model. As you move the handpiece with the tracker on it, the cameras pick this up and enable you to position this and get the angle and the depth. So these three items are really key for placing the implant. So the plan that you did on the DTX implant software will now show up as the implant goes into position. Okay, I get it. Now, okay, why use it? And this is always the interesting part because you can go and do this freehand, but we're talking about scanning, planning, and navigating. So getting this into an ideal and excellent position for long-term success. Now, I'm sure you can probably do it with your eyeball, but this allows you to do it in another guided way. So let's do a case. We're gonna take a patient, insert the patient tracker, which is on a thermoplastic clip that my assistant has put into position. So you can see it looks like this as you're getting all set up. Now the two cameras are gonna pick up the trackers on the handpiece and also on the patient's maxilla in this case. And this enables you to then coincide these two objects in 3D space. So when you go to the patient, you'll be able to take the handpiece and start to do your treatment. Now let's have a quick look at the drilling protocol. You'll take the first drill, which is an osseo director, and using this, you'll use some water at 2000 RPM. Number two, you'll use an osseo shaper which is going to be at 50 RPM without water, and then you're going to place the implant. If you can't get the implant into position, what you'll start to do is to use an osseo shaper too, without water at 50 RPM, and then attempt to place the implant again. One of the great features of the X-Guide is that the osseo director will be measured utilizing the tools within the system. So as we're doing this, we're able to calibrate the implant length 
within the X guide. So you don't have to worry about the depth as much because you'll be able to see the depth on the screen because the X guide is going to calibrate the drill, the patient, and the CBCT. So we're actually seeing in 3D like a GPS exactly where this implant is going to go in. And so the two eyeballs of the X guide are looking down and then we're able to calibrate the drill and test it. And then here we go. We're starting to mark on the ridge where that implant position is going to be. So I'm going to just do a, f a first little mark just to make sure that I'm in the accurate position. And I'll check this and eyeball it. But also it enables me to know where I want to make my incision line. So this is a very interesting system because we can come in and using the trackers, we can know exactly where we're going to be on the patient. And this enables us to get a 3D GPS position with this wonderful tool. So as we go in, we get depth, angle, and position by utilizing the system. You can see the clip is in position. As we start to move the handpiece, we can angle this to within 0 0.8, 0 0.6. And we can see as we go in, we're actually going to follow where that implant position is going to be. So we're going to incise slightly lingual to this access uh, channel and this enables us to start to make a shape of the soft tissues and we're going to also be able to not have to do as much of a flap because we can take a molt here and start to reflect the tissue but we don't have to really do uh, vertical incisions to uh, then we can create this very conservative flap, which I think aids in healing. It also keeps the blood supply of the parosteum connected because we want to have as much blood supply as possible to the area. So as we go in, we can see that we'll do the flap and then we don't have to look at the complete bone because we can see it on the screen. As we go in, we're going to just lift that up, make sure it's clean from little tissue tags and we'll go back in and start to place the implant. So we'll do the osteotomy first, and this is how you used to have to measure the uh, N1 osteodirector, but we don't have to do that because it's calibrated by the system. We're gonna measure the drill length, and this is one of the reasons why I like to use this, because once we position the implant on the CBCT, then it's gonna be transferred using the technology enable us to get that implant into the position that we've planned on the CBCT. So utilizing this small kit, we're able to start to do our implant placement. And this will be, it's actually quite fun. And we're able to position this implant so that we can get the exact position of what we want. So again, we calibrate the drill and then we perform a system check. So this is going in, touching other teeth, making sure we're on target. And then when, once we go in, we're gonna to start to angle. And the yellow line shows how deep we're going in. And as we go in, the angle, the position, and the depth are all controlled. After the osseo director has been utilized, we're gonna use the drill number two, which is the osseo shaper. And the osseo shaper is more like an auger type of drill. And this is going in and churning the bone. So you don't wanna suction this bone during the surgery. So the osseo shaper actually comes with the implant in the packaging. It's inside of this area on the end. You can see that there's a latch sticking out. So you'll go and, and uh, snap the two white wings, push them together, and the osseo shaper drill will pull out. It's a single-use drill. It is, uh, as I said, more of an auger shape, and it's supposed to go at 50 RPM. So we'll still mark that and and uh, do it to length. So we'll make this so that when the drill is going in, it's gonna follow that first osseo director. So it's actually gonna make it very easy for us. So all in all, it's a very simple system because that first director is really creating that path. And then the osseo shaper follows that and uh, stays on target. But the computer allows you to keep going. And so using the X guide, it enables you to stay on target. So we're doing this at 50 RPM without water. We're churning some bone, and so we don't want this bone to be all suctioned away. So make sure your team understands not to be doing a lot of suction at this point. And then we can just check this. So looking at this diagram, we can see that we want to have position. 
So we want to be in the correct arch position. Number two, we want to have the correct depth. So we're at 13.6 on this drill. And then number three, we can see that we want to be at the angle. So our goal here is to come in and create this ideal position. And you can see as we back out, we're going slowly back out. And some of the bone's gonna pull out, but do not suction this at this point. Our goal is to keep that bone in the osteotomy so that we can place the implant and start the healing process. Because there's not that zone of death, you know, this cellular zone that's been heated up and really big. So as we take this implant out of the package, you see it has a tie ultra surface, which has a special coating, but it also has this surface that is very hydrophilic, and in fact, ultra hydrophilic, so it's very attractive to blood. And so this is what we want at this point because we want to have this muco integration that's going to occur. So you see that the anodized surface is also enabling this to be various levels of roughness down the implant. Now, it's, you can't see this because it's nanotechnology, meaning that it's really, really small. But what happens is when you place the implant, the blood goes all over the implant and then the different surfaces of the implant as you go up and down the implant enable this to hopefully heal in a much more efficient and effective way. So as you put this in, you can see the uh, anodized surface, which is actually both gray and gold here. And this is by passing some volts through this and it goes through a process of making the surface be very rough uh, down towards the end of the implant. And then as it comes up the implant, it's at different levels of surface roughness. And so it's a big topic for having a video like this, but it does make the implant um, tend to have a muco integration that's, that's good. Now our goal is to get this at a nice high torque. We could have put a temporary on this and started to do the healing process the patient didn't really want this, so what she wanted was to have an implant. So we can see that the implant is torquing quite high. It's up to 70 newtons. And uh, this is what we want, is to have a nice, firm implant at the ideal torque. And so we're also going to keep the flat side to the facial, just to enable the prosthetics to be efficient. And so the, this is marked by having that line coming to the facial. So there's three opportunities as you put the implant because it's a trioval conical connection. So as we put this in, we're able to just position that so it's to the facial and this will help when you're doing the prosthetics. So we're gonna put on a 1.5 uh, N1 base abutment, which is a zeal abutment, meaning that it has a surface that's also rough, not as rough as the implant, but just uh, slightly rough so that the soft tissues in the junctional epithelium can start to connect to this abutment. So it's a one abutment, one time concept. We'll make sure the floss is in position, and then we'll use a base abutment driver to tighten this down. So we'll tighten it down by hand first, and then this is going to go to 20 Newton centimeters to have the final seat of the abutment. Now we have two options on top of this from a prosthetic point. We could make an angulated screw channel, which would mean that we would take an impression from the base and then have an angulated screw channel built on top of this, which would be screwed down to 20 Newton centimeters. The other option is to have a straight universal base that's gonna be cemented into a screw mentable crown. And when we do this, then we're able to uh, have a base which is going to be a metal universal base that's going to be attached to the uh, base abutment and then have a zirconia crown that can be made in really any uh, dental lab. So one is made with Nobel BioCares lab and the other one's made in a local lab. So if you're going to do angulated screws uh, and channels then you have to send it to Nobel BioCare through your lab. Now if you were worried about bone and seating you'd use a trioval conical connection bone mill but um, before you place this abutment, but uh, we felt confident that this was going to be fine. So I'm tightening this down. I'm going to tighten it down to 20 Newton centimeters. And so you can see here that I'm at that outside skirt right there, and that's got that into position of where I'm happy. Now I'll confirm that with an x-ray, 
and make sure that that's okay. And here I'm gonna put a healing cap on. And so now I'm using a OmniGrip mini screwdriver, which is going to be used to position this healing cap in, on top of that base abutment. So once you have the patient come back, you're gonna take an impression either by doing an analog impression with a um, base level impression technique, or you'll also do, you could do a uh, iOS, so an intraoral scan, and uh, we'll show you this as the patient comes back. So have a look at the final x-ray. I think it looks quite nice, and uh, all in all, I was impressed with the X-Guide, and I've been using it for a while, so I would encourage you to try it out and check it out and see what you think about it. I know that uh, many can still do the freehand and uh, all the best to you or even the, the two millimeter guide. And so anyway, give it a try. Uh, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.